All right, so this last part, we're going to look at um, one cubic function, but then we'll look at something called direct and inverse variation. Um, so the cubic function problem, uh, we're not really doing too much of these higher order polynomials yet. We'll get to that more uh, some later sections and chapters. Um, so for now, we're really just looking at something we've seen before, which is where um, where is this increasing and decreasing? So um, increasing, we, you know, the domain is all real numbers, so we're going infinitely in either direction. Uh, increasing along here, so remember we always move left to right. We always talk about these intervals in terms of x. So negative infinity to negative 1. And then we are also increasing from 2 to, to, to infinity. And then we are decreasing everywhere else, which in this case is only one, one part. So here we're decreasing from negative 1 to 2. And that is it. And so we always have parentheses with these because at negative 1 and at 2, it is not increasing or decreasing. It is changing. So, um, so we don't ever include those points. All right, so the last little part in this section uh, is talking about variation. So when the output value of a function is proportional to the input, we say the output y varies directly with the input x. The relationship can be written as y equals kx. And K is called the constant of proportionality. So before we look at this part, let's look at this first example. Uh, so if A varies directly with T, A is 66. When T is 4, write an equation for A in terms of T. So we're going to use this. Um, so K is the constant. And so we really just need to figure out what K is. And so we're just going to plug in the 66 for A. And we're going to plug the 4 in for t and then solve k. So we'll divide both sides by 4. And we get 16.5. And so our function a is 16.5 t. And that is it. Uh, so these are very simple. It's mostly just a matter of paying attention to the words that we're given. So varies directly means we're using this one. Um, the other way is coming back up here, we say the output y varies inversely as opposed to directly. Uh, with the input x if the output is proportional to the reciprocal of the input. And so here we have the formula y equals k over x. So when it's directly, x is in the numerator. When it's inverse, it is in the denominator. So let's look at part b. Suppose f of x varies inversely with the square of x. And so all that means is f of x is k, it's inverse, so the x is in the denominator, and it's the square of x, not just not just x. f of 5 is 240, so let's figure out what k is. And I believe that comes to 6,000. I should have written, that should be 5 squared, but 5 squared is 25, so 6,000 equals k. So f of x is 6,000 over x squared. And so we need to find f of 8. So we're just going to plug in 8 for x. And we get 93.75. Uh, so these are very, these are very basic, uh, very, very simple. Just kind of pay attention to the, the I mean, these words will be pretty explicitly given. Um, whatever this is, that tells you what the exponent of x is. So it could be any anything, I guess. Um, could be the square root, could be the cube root, could be the fourth, uh, x to the fourth, fourth power of x. Um, but whatever it says there, that's what you put for the x. And it inversely means x is in the bottom. Directly means x is in the top, or t as the case may be. All right, so uh, that's it for the 1.4. Let me know if you have any questions.